الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الشفاء المرسلين فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself أنا عبدك العجي ستعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence that Allah gives us this life of ours and life so fragile. And alhamdulillah that Allah granted us a life with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the greatest gift of that love is that Allah guide us towards the tariqahs, the spiritual paths of ishq and love and muhabbat and good character and that it perfects our faith, our religion, our deen. Alhamdulillah in this month of 11, Ramadan mulki wa malakut and the one whom controls and governs the world of form and the world of light. That glory be to Allah owner of all His realms. And alhamdulillah that what we talked about of the mirror, the Divine mirror and the immensity of those blessings and the dressings of those lights, alhamdulillah. And we go into those with maybe question and answers to see what people are understanding before we just keep moving to other topics. This purification and this madad and everything that has been building up, they're all beads on a tasbih. So in previous talks about the importance of the madad, the importance of the bayad as a completion of Islam, the importance of all these practices leads up to the importance of who you're facing in your salah and that the purification, how to receive this light from Prophet how to see Prophet and if you don't see him, know that he sees you. And this is our opening for that taqwa because maybe Allah is a bit too much for people to understand but to know that we want to see Prophet and this is from Allah teaching us our salah, that salaamu alayka yuhan nabi, I want it to be real. I want to see Sayyidina Muhammad the generous face that the Divine allows us to see. I want to see that, I want my salah to be real. Well how am I going to see that? How am I going to be dressed by that? That becomes then all of the reasons for purifying ourselves, cleansing ourselves, leaving a life of khidmat and service and donating and giving our time, whether we donate our time, our wealth, our, our life, whatever it is that we're going to donate in that way, it's the way of purification to reach towards that holy face. So when people are not understanding and posting ridiculous comments in other forums and other platforms, giving themselves as if they don't understand the whole path. Because they take pieces of it and say, there's no need, there's no need to be charitable. Mm, I don't think that's against Islam. So don't know how anybody would post something like that or even repost something like that. Means that there's a deficiency in the understanding. Means that when you're charitable, it doesn't matter who you're charitable to. If anyone comes and tells you that that charity is of no value, and that you follow up your charity with bad comments and, and bad talks, that's against Islamic law. Means that charity in the way of Allah is not for a person to follow it up. Meaning why? Why Allah in Holy Qur'an says, when you give charity, don't follow it up with a bad comment and do like this and what are you doing with this, what is… we've described many times before, if you want to give charity and you see a bold person. They say, I want to give them a hat because I think maybe the sun is burning their head. 
This mas'al from awliyaullah it teaches us that you want to give charity, you could give the hat and give to the individual. But Allah is warning that for that charity to be accepted, don't follow it up. Don't come every day and say, this hat I gave to you, it has to be worn like this. You have to put like this, why are you wearing like this, move it like this. Means every action of faith in this oceans of immense reality require us that what we do, we are doing wholly for Allah Everything is for Allah and Allah is the one whom grants the reward. Nobody can claim that whatever charity you do, they're giving you a reward. No, everything is that Allah gives the reward. Allah is the one whom is the best to keep a hisab, He keeps the accounting. And He says, not even this mustard seed under a rock is unaccounted for. The one who knows the provision of his, his ants and every smallest creature, Allah knows its provision, where it's located, what it's going to eat, when it's going to live, when it's going to die, what will be the destiny of everything. That's tawheed, means that then nothing in Allah's way is ever wasted. Nothing you do is excessive and there's no way to be excessive because ultimately we should be giving our lives in the way of Allah The money, the time, these are just small sacrifices. When Allah called the servants to themselves that, you gave that, now we're going for hajj. Means the father of faith in the next month is going to be teaching us, Sayyidina Ibrahim that, all my life I was generous and my generosity beyond imagination. However Allah tested Sayyidina Ibrahim was immense. Whatever he had the angels would come and say, give us half of it and he would say, take it. Give us another half of it, take it. Give us all of it. He said, take it all. Even to the point of saying, self from me. And said, well, what I'm going to do with these, these sheep you gave me, I was just here to test how generous you are. He says, that's between you and Allah. Once I gave it, I don't have any comment on it. You send the sheep wherever you want to send, they send to Jabal Kaf to hide it for, for some other reason. And then Allah after all that generosity, He asked from Sayyidina Ibrahim what? I want your son. Means it's no longer about money and cash and giving this or giving that. He said, I want your son. I want that which you prayed for and which seems to be very dear for you, I want that. So it means giving in Allah's way is not something we can imagine and no matter what we do, we didn't accomplish anything of our predecessors in the way in which they gave from themselves, their lives, their families, they give everything in the sacrifice in the way of Allah And Allah is the best of those to keep a hisab. Means Allah gives the reward, Allah knows exactly what was given and what Allah wants to open for the servant. These openings are the reality of how to reach to that reflection. Our khidmat and the only thing that has a value because we don't place a value on our actions. We don't think, oh my salah, my prayer is so amazing, Allah will open everything because of my salah. But awliyaullah come and teach us, no whatever is opening is this khidmat of the servant. Means their willingness to serve with their life, with their wealth, with their time, with their possessions. They live the life of service. That service was the purification. That service was the cleaning of their souls. We said what we want to achieve is not an energy that we can achieve to rise to reach it but 
the reflection and the purification of the reflection. So it means our life is our zikr, our taskiyah, our, our cleansing, all of our service that we're doing. For why? Because then soul becomes purified, purified, purified until it becomes so purified it begins to reflect that which it loves. Means then in the… now they describe the mirror is the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad If that holy face begins to reflect upon the soul, his holy realities of what Allah dressed the seven holy openings which we then described is the reality of the, the arsh and the throne. If those seven holy openings are continuously dressing upon the soul and the soul becomes so clean and so purified that it's a mirror reflecting that light, means not only is it dressing the soul but then anyone who comes into the presence of that soul is being reflected to the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what it means to become Muhammadiyoon. They reflect the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are the satellites living upon this earth and that's the purpose of their existence. Allah raised them, purified them and said, from a, a realm that is unseen you will manifest that light onto this earth. So it means then this way of purification, cleansing and all the practices that they're asking for us to do, it begins to reflect that holy face so that the soul can begin to witness and understand who they're facing in these realities and how to be dressed by these realities. And as a result it reflects out to all of creation these realities. That's why their souls are blessed. That's why that Muhammadan light when it reflects from them is the source of rizq, is the source of bounty, it's the source of rahmah, it's the source of every grace from Allah is reflecting like a mirror off of their souls to everything, to every environment that that light is touching. It's touching from the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad immensity that can't even be understood. Means that's why then these teachings are, give your time, give from your possessions, do whatever you can for zahki and perfection and cleanliness of the soul and of the character and then the muraqabah to understand what is it that you're and who is it that you're facing and how to receive that tajalli so that the salah can be real and the heart can become open and alive. Muhi al qulub, the one whom opens and revives the heart. How he revives the heart? Why they all these expressions were coming? Because like the beads that people don't put together. Why the name of Prophet in the burda, burda sharif that all thousands of tariqah jamas are reciting? Muhi al qulub, how his Muhi al qulub? Because by the love and the salawat of Sayyidina Muhammad and what we described last night that in five times a day Allah wants His holy face looking at His nation. So all their salah is in the presence of that holy face from nur and high from the holy eyes of that beloved face He's dressing His nation with lights and bahrul hayat from Rahman and Rahim are dressing these souls every time they make salah. Whether they're making their sunnah prayers or fard prayers, their salah are all in the presence of that face And that's why as a result every time they enter into salah the beloved face of Sayyidina Muhammad Wajikil Kareem is dressing their souls and reviving, reviving their souls. Now imagine if they understood that and they made their salawats. So people whom say, oh we don't have to do salawat, see how, how far they are away from real Islam. You don't even know who you're facing, you're not understanding even the words in your salah. If you understood who you were facing, 
then you would understand how and how powerful the salawat is. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad and what Prophet gave back, as soon as you make a salawat upon me Allah sends my soul to make 10 salawats upon you. See now all these beads begin to come together, why send my soul? It's because you're facing my holy face and as soon as you make salawat my face begins to dress your soul. So people want to understand just for us to have a perception that where, where is all of this? Imagine a room for us to just understand where the holy face of Prophet is and all the souls are there. And every time they enter into their salah that face is shining upon their soul. So it's something that can't be even imagined. That Abu Arwa, the father of souls, the one whom is in the presence of all their souls is this beloved face dressing and blessing their reality. So alhamdulillah and holy companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, all of them gave us hints for them. Anytime there's an oath, a testimony of oath from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, what his oath was? I swear by the one whom holds my soul in his hand, means he's, he's, he's giving a station that when he prays he witnessed, he witnessed the one who holds his soul in his hands and from there he's looking at the beloved face of Sayyidina Muhammad and all worshipness is for Allah all worshipness is for Allah You pray, we pray to Allah. And people think, oh because you said the face thing, is this like a partner? Astaghfirullah. Don't people understand that you were facing the Kaaba, so you were facing stones and you were happy with that. And everybody comes and they face this house of stones, the ancient house of stones and they're happy with that. When only I come and elevate the understanding and say, uh, why house of stones? The owner of these stones, his face is more holy What did it change? You were bowing down in the presence of stones, so you bow down in the presence of this holy face all worshipness is for Allah nothing changed. Just the description of your Kaaba changed, become much more holier. We begin to understand the Kaaba was a sense to bring me into tawheed. The Kaaba was a symbol, activate your heart because the Kaaba represents your heart. Everybody come to one, we have to have one heart, not multiple hearts. We have one heart, I created no man with two hearts. So the Kaaba was the symbol of one heart, La ilaha illallah. This was your first level and first maqam, Islam. What maqam al-Iman is that Prophet described, you have to love me more than you love yourself. That became the station of faith, if I love Prophet more than I love myself then my heart is filled with the love of Prophet Means now my station in my qibla is the love of Prophet my heart has to be filled with Muhammadun Rasulullah Then what was maqam al-ihsan? Worship as if you see your Lord and if you don't see your Lord, know that your Lord sees you. Hmm. Means that this now is maqam al-ihsan, that when you pray your Rabb is seeing you and if you don't see the face of Prophet as Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuhan Nabi, I don't have people understanding the, the prayers and people who want to get agitated by everything. These are the words of the prayers. 
Assalamu alayhi ya Hannabi means then you're facing and if you're not seeing the face then know that that holy face is seeing us and live your life in accordance to that understanding. The Prophet is watching me, I govern myself, I do what I can that then goes back to why we do charity, why we do khidmat, why we do service, why we do all these things is why? Because Allah said they feed people not for any money that somebody's going to give. They don't come to the door and say, okay now give me ten dollars I, I, I brought you a dinner for free. They feed people but for the sake of the holy face. Means this khidmat, this service that the shaykhs are encouraging people, please go out and be of service. Do good things and good deeds, give from what Allah has given to you, why? So that the holy face begins to activate its nazar upon the soul and begins to look to that one with a special light and that light begin to dress them like what we talked about last night. The seven essences from the reality of the face each time Prophet will begin to activate. From the two ears, Asami al-Basir, from the sifat of Asami means the one whom hears, this is a divine attribute. Al-Basir, the one whom sees, means that when Prophet begin to activate with nazar, when his nazar comes upon the soul of the individual because it can be three people praying and only one receive that special tajalli. Like a laser it comes, that's why each one's state and hal is individual to themselves because of the nazar of what Prophet is sending. If he sends Sifat al-Sami means that he's sending a light that enables the soul to begin to push its speech onto the personality and the body of the individual. And they begin to hear what Allah describes from Hadith al-Qudsi. I become the hearing in which you hear. Allah does nothing to the servant except dressing first through Sayyidina Muhammad Means the holy face has to begin to send Sifat al-Sami so that the servant begins to hear like a light and a laser that keeps coming and keeps dressing, can be dressing over years of their life. Sifat as sami so that they hear what Allah wants them to hear because we said it's all from Allah, from La ilaha illallah coming to Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Divinely face begins to dress the soul. Sifat al-Basir, Sami al-Basir are locks on the ears, so anyone who wants to hear and see what then your most important faculty? These are the attributes are in ears. So unless you achieve samina wa atana that we hear and we obey, not we hear and we argue, not we hear and we debate but that we hear and we obey. As a result Allah lifts the locks off their ears, why? So that the light of al-Sami begins to dress them. So they cannot see and they cannot hear if there's locks on their ears. So they practice in the tariqah, Sami wa I hear and I obey, tamam. The Turkish they say, tamam, finished, khalas, it's okay. We heard it, it's done. It's not a teaching, I'll debate it, maybe think about it, maybe send a comment arguing about it. I took a path in which to hear and obey. As a result of that practice in life, the light of Prophet from his holy ears in this world of life begins to dress their ear and their soul so that they hear. The holy light of Al-Basir and, and the people of vision 
dressing their heart to begin to see. Alim al-Qadir that when Prophet safeguard your mouth, safeguard your mouth so my sifat al-alim can begin to dress your heart. Means don't speak lies, don't speak at all and don't, don't speak anything from shaitan. Means what? Safeguarding the mouth and that's why the tariqah is based on samt, silence. Keep a path in life in which you're silent. If you want Prophet to begin to open alim, al-alim, that's why the tariqah structure is based on this holy face. So the student takes a practice that, I want my tongue to open, safeguard your tongue, don't talk, don't lie, don't, don't spread falsehood. How can anything from that tongue be dressed from Prophet that he, he take from his holy saliva to bless and moisten the tongue. And then with their salawats, the beatific praising, their mouth becomes beautific, becomes fragranced with the light and the love of Prophet That's why the nasheeds and the recitations and the reciters are immense warriors in Allah's way. That by the power of the sincerity in the heart when they recite devils are running and these are the weapons of the heavens is recitation. Why? Because Prophet fragrance their tongue, means the tongue has an immense importance. So speak the truth, speak with good character, no yelling, no anger, as much as we can control the tongue. Prophet is dressing a sifat al alim. Why we want to inherit from lisan al aliyah? When Allah says, The one whom we grant a wisdom has been granted my greatest gift that I grant for you the tongue lisan al aliyah, the tongue most high. And when the holy face wants to dress the servant, from the oceans of, pa- of power, Al-Qadir which is the nafas and the nose symbolizes the breath of power, the breath of rahmah. So that when they are safeguarding their breath, they're conscious of their breath and say, before I ask for, from anything did I thank Allah for my breath, did I thank Him from this power and this life He's given to me. And as a result when they meditate their breathing, the dhikrahu, they meditate, they connect with the shaykh and ask to dress my breath and as they're breathing they visualize this fire of who that enters within them and that they push out the dhikrahu. And every time the who is coming and, and filling with lights and energy and every time all the badness is, is repelling from the body because when this fire of energy comes in it pushes out all the negativity. And the more they safeguard their breath and understand the breath, then the holy breath and sifat al-qadr begins to dress from the holy face upon their soul. And then we describe then from the right eye nur and hay, that in their meditation and contemplation every time their goodness and they're under the nazar because of their efforts, their khidmat their service, these holy eyes are now dressing. So your khidmat and service, the charity you give, the charity of your time, of your effort, your practices, whatever you're doing to be of service to the shaykhs, to the tariqah, to the way, what do you open? So when you serve the shaykh it's the most powerful opening of nur and high because the Prophet loves the shaykh, is the representation of Sayyidina Muhammad Means then the gaze of Prophet begins to open from Sifat al-Rahman 
a nur and every time that servant is being dressed by the light of nur upon their eye, upon their being and complete and perfect their light and from Sifat rahim the left eye Prophet is then dressing them from Bahrul Hayat that they are becoming eternal servants of Allah and perfecting their character and their lights. And that's why the love of Ahlul Bayt is so important because these two lights, from those lights Allah created the soul of Sayyidina Imam al Hasan salam, the right eye and the left light and left eye of Sayyidina Muhammad there's the creation of Imam al Husayn salam. By loving this Ahlul Bayt means activating more of the immensity of these realities because the, these eyes of Prophet described Imam al Hassan and Imam al Husayn wa Qurat al Ain. They were the beloved of, the, of those beautific eyes of Prophet his beloved grandchildren, they occupied the reality of that love and that ish. So then activating those eyes upon your life is to love his grandchildren more than you love yourself. Love Imam al Hasan salam, Imam al Husayn salam more than we love ourselves. That's the activation of those eyes. And that's why Allah says, fi dunya hasanat wa akhira hasanat wa kina adhab nar that's what they wanted, Allah gave the clue in Holy Qur'an that if you want Hasan in life and you want the Hasan of, Hus- of Akhirah and you want protection from the fire then love them, be of service to them Wasallam. remember them Wasallam. Means these are immense beads that they come together like a beautific tasbih. Everywhere we look Allah is giving us these understandings, these blessings so that the nazar and the light and the love of Prophet inshaAllah to be dressing upon us, our families and our community by means of these lights is the perfection of our characters inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.